start off with a 10 pop from here. And then what I usually like to do is, oh, I should have made sure, oh, Errol. <laughs> um, I should have made sure I was in English too first. That's the lucky channel. We got a four star here, a three star here. I wanted to go ahead and do as much as I can for the deck of fate. There's two ways to do it. Upgrade champions, summon souls from soul stones. Upgrading champions is going to take a while for me to do, and I don't want to have you guys sit here and watch me do this. So I am going to summon souls from soul stones, pull as much as I can from there, then get the points, pull these cards here, and then the rest I'm probably going to just do champion training for. I saw a video from Saf talking about how the deck of fate for this particular one is really good because essentially you're saving like months of farming for gear. And if you don't know by this point, gear is pretty much everything in Raid Shadow Legends. Like it's it's half, it's half and half, right? So like half of it is having the champions, half of it is having the gear. And then I guess you could say like uh, uh, there's a portion of it. I'm not saying it's like 50-50. You could change the percentages however you want. A lot of it is also wisdom and experience. So back to English too. That's where it's at. All right, Master Butcher, Draconis, I wish was good. Godseeker and Eerie. Honestly, I don't even use Godseeker anymore after I changed my Sand Devil team. Because I used to do the whole um, uh, Godseeker and Ninja combo. And then I switched it to like Godseeker and Ferric and the Fat. And then Godseeker, just pretty much Godseeker and anybody can essentially do Sand Devil. The issue that I was having with the Godseeker and Ninja was oh we got two back-to-back -back legendaries queen eva don't have her the issue i was having with sand devil is that it was taking way too long somewhere between two to six minutes is way too long for me to want to do or be enticed to do sand devil so switched it up now i'm uh doing it in 15 seconds it's my main account on my alt account i did a video for it that does it in 13 seconds now. That one I really like. But after looking at um looking at a night and day difference for Sand Devil between this account, my two to six minute run, like it varies, versus on my alts where I'm doing it in 13 seconds just because I have two nuts. I was like, no, there's no way I'm gonna be settling for two to six minute runs anymore. It's just the difference is night and day, and uh it's not okay to be doing two to six minute runs. So Oh, uh, looks like I got to make some space. I'll be right back. Actually, you know, I figured I could show you guys exactly how I clear out my my blessing sections and you can see who I'm upgrading. Uh, just, I don't know. I think maybe some of you guys would enjoy seeing where I'm at on this account. Um, so we're bringing Ugo. I don't really use Ugo. I remember at one point I had three different Ugos built. Now, I don't use Dark Aethel for anything, and I don't know if a 5-star is really... Like, I'm just not going to use her. I might actually just sell that, because I just don't use Dark Aethel for anything. And we have a 4-star for Biggin. This is probably something I'm going to do. So let's do that, and let's go ahead and awaken him. Because uh, 4 stars on Biggin's pretty cool. Biggin is one of those champions that I wanted for a really long time, just because I, I liked his nuke, I liked his stun... And it looks like I don't need anybody else. I don't use the Demitha for anything. I already have a higher blessing on one Demitha. And that's about it. In my soul collection, of course, I'm going to have a lot of mythicals, but no mythical. So <laughs> there's an issue there. I got a couple Tauruses, but I'm already at three stars, I believe. So what I'm going to do is just start selling things. Newt. I'm going to keep one in case I pull a second nut. So that Supreme Aethel, maybe one day I might pull her and might want her around. I don't know. Death Bell, I'm not, I don't care about a lot of these one stars. Nishak, I think I have a higher blessing for him. Let me check Nishak real quick. Although I don't use Nishak for anything. So oh, I have a three star for him already. So we don't need that. And even if I pull another one, I don't see myself using him. Eryx, I already got a higher blessing for Tremeria? I got a higher blessing for Cronum. Don't need this for Ninja. I have three Duchesses with blessings already. And let's just get rid of 
a lot of these epics. Asterix looks pretty good, but there's no need for him. I have a five star for Jamarsa already, and a five star for Demitha, who I honestly don't even use anymore. And then Godseeker and Eerie. You already know the drill on that one. Ultimate Gaelic. I wish he did a lot better, but he just doesn't. Sell these five stars here because I don't need them. And I already have a five star for Seer or a six star. Five or six star. I forgot which one it is. Towering Titan. Is that Towering Titan? I don't have him. Not going to use him. Aothar. Sell these. Now, the only thing I'm curious about is... Actually, no, because in the Marius mission section, there is... Or in the Mar in the section... What do you call it? How do you say it? In the Marius missions, there is a mission to get a specific amount of souls. And I think there's like three missions like that or something like that. And you need to sell a bunch of these. So if you don't know about that and you want to go for Marius at some point and sometime soon... I would suggest keeping some of the bigger ones so that when that mission does come around, you can easily bang that out. Don't need a five star for Gnarlhorn because I think, actually, let me check for Gnarlhorn. Let me check for Renegade. Not that I'm going to use them anywhere. And then Cold Hearts. I think all of my Cold Hearts and my Apothecary are pretty much good. Um, let me check Gnarlhorn. Yeah, Gnarlhorn's got a five star already. So get rid of that. And I'm assuming Renegade does too. And so you. So sell this. And then we're going to... Oh, oh, what the heck? What's going on here? Little uh, glitch? All right. Well, since we're here. Do this. All right. Sell this. Sell these. Don't need you guys. Now, Blind Seer. Um, hmm. There are some of these Legos that I might get that I don't know about. So I'm kind of like, should I or should I keep them? You guys let me know. Would you keep any of these? Or would you sell any of these? Let's just do this for now. And then, yeah, I think we're we're pretty solid. And then let's go ahead. Oops. Let's go ahead and bring out two, bring out two of these. Whoops. And then continue our mission to go ahead and get points. And while we're at it, some new souls for champions that I could really use. Like, I'm, I'm still looking for a six-star blessing for Rotos. I know it's unlikely that I'll pull something that crazy. Three-star for Wukong. I think both of my Wukongs already have... Yeah, three and a five-star for both Wukongs. So, there goes that. But, what's on my wish list? Yeah, Rotos... Taurus. Trunda, of course, because I'm starting to become a Trunda abuser. So I think Trunda is actually one that's going to be a, a big change for me if I do pull her soon. So please, Trunda. Shu Zen, keeping that one just in case I do pull her. Crazier things have happened. Trunda? No Trunda. Robar. Maybe for Centranos? I don't know. It's not the craziest Lego that I have. Not too proud of him. Put him in the vault, never let him out. He's a little mad about that. All right, anointed. All these trash, trash rares here that they just throw into the game. Just to say that they have this many champions in raid, Shadow Legends. Throw these guys away because we don't need them. We don't want rares. We don't even use rares anymore. We use the same 12 legendary champions, and that's about it. A double star. I already have a higher blessing for you. And yeah, let's do that. Oh, I guess we could pull another. Yeah, six star blessing. I've been waiting to show up. They're going to cost me about 300 of these eternal soul essences. So I'm waiting on that. Let me just go ahead and throw this on him, make another slot available. And we'll pull two more here. Hopefully you guys are getting bigger souls than I am for champions that you're actually going to need or use. Cold Heart's always a good one, unfortunately. Don't need her right now. So, let's pull three, and then we'll pop off of the big ten. One. Nope. Nothing there. It's always the immortal soul stones and then the eternals that always have like something juicy. Very rarely do I ever pull anything huge 
from the smaller ones. I feel like I could pull a thousand of the smaller ones and get pretty much nothing. There's Deacon. I feel like I could pull a thousand of these and get like basically nothing, but I feel like I could pull a bunch of these and these and get something that's actually useful. Let me see here. Okay, Deacon can get it. Deacon can get the uh, four star here. Now I don't use Deacon anymore, but he's an OG. He's a, uh, I got a good amount of use from him early on. Let's see this. Okay, we got a mythical that I don't have. Frolny, Rodos, Lydia, four stars. I wonder where I'm at with Lydia. Got a giant cock here. Nubkex beat me to that joke, by the way. And that's a big rip, but we still have enough to... Okay, so Lydia's getting the four star. That's huge. That's a big boost right there. Let's go ahead and see the big difference here. Brimstone now is going to be at 30%. I was like, I was excited. And I was like, oh, it's going to be protected. No, just the 30%, but we do get some extra stats here. She was at two. Now she gets extra defense, HP, extra crit damage. She does a little bit of damage. She doesn't like hit like a wet noodle. She's not the craziest damage dealer, but she puts in work. She does a little bit of damage. Getting a little bit closer there. Genbo, I'll give it to Genbo. Gembo does do some damage. Really good new Gurp Arena, especially early on, if you have nobody else. We'll sell these guys here. And let's hope that we can get enough for at least one more Eternal. I might have to sell. Actually, no, it looks like we've got enough for one huge Eternal. And let's pull that guy. All right, guys. Finally, the last three Eternal Soul Stones. Wish me luck. Hoping for a Rhodos. Hoping for a Trunda. That's what I could think of off the top of my head. I'll also take a Yumiko. Okay, legendary. And we get fucking Killian. God damn it. Fine. Jeez. I mean, Cintronos, right? There are some stages locked behind how many blessings you have. And Killian is one of those champions. Like, if you don't know, I... I'm not even gonna get... No, no, I'll show you. I'll show you guys what I mean. Let me show you what I mean. All right, so... His A1's got a decrease speed, chance to decrease turn meter. He does hit kind of hard a little bit. His moves do look kind of cool, especially this one right here. Attacks all enemy, block active skills, 100% chance on a four turn cooldown. You guys know me, I prefer three turn cooldowns with books. Four turns is already pushing it. Then we have another um, stun, where we have a stun with a turn, another turn meter, and then resets the cooldown of the skill if the target is killed. That's on a three turn cooldown. This does pr uh, hit pretty hard. But one of the things that I, I can't really like wrap my head around is, and I can actually understand a little bit of where they're coming from because Killian the Lucky is one of those St. Patty's Pokemons, Pokemans. His thing, or his passive, is places two of the following buffs for two turns at the start of each turn. It's two of either of these, and it's completely random. And when things are completely randomly generated, it makes it very difficult for me to want to uh, build anything that creates consistency. And you know, when you're doing raid, you want something to create consistency so that you can make teams that have consistency. He does hit hard. I'm not going to say like he's complete trash, but he's also kind of, I don't know, you know, but maybe we'll revisit him one day. All right, we got to pull the last two. And another Lego. Taurus, Rodos. What the f This is not luck. This is not luck. Two back-to-back -back Shamrocks? Or uh, what do you call it? Uh, St. Patrick Pokemon? Jesus. If I had to choose between Shamrock and Killian, I actually might choose Shammy. Because Shammy just seems to have a little bit more utility. I don't know what it is. I think it's this right here. But, um, and then the buff m removal here. But he's got some RNG mechanics as well. But for some reason, I just, I would prefer to get Shammy. At this rate, you might as well just give me Podrig. Okay, I guess not. Again, this dude? Hold up. Maybe I have enough for one more. I'm not going to use this guy anywhere. Septimus. I need to sell these three. The four one, the fours and above. 
So I finished summoning souls and I banged out a few champions in champ training. Uh, just used a lot of pots. Now I'm going to open everything and we'll see what we get. I already opened one. We got stone skin. We got a mythical stone skin. That's pretty good. Hopefully we get anything. We get something good there. A void shard. We'll always take that. Another mythical. Serpent points. We'll take it. So I think it was 40,000 in total. And the way I was able to tell that I was done upgrading champions was it just stopped giving me points. All right, we got more protection. We got more stone skin. And what Saf said was that this is pretty much the equivalent to months of farming in Hydra or Hydra Clash. Okay, it looks like we got... You shouldn't have. You shouldn't have Polarium. Those brews. Okay, we'll take that. We'll take that. We'll take a uh, Lego Tomes. I don't know if I need them, though. I think I've got a significant amount. Or sufficient amount. I swear they changed the drop rates in Clan Boss. Because I'm pretty sure a while back, Sacred Shards and Lego Tomes and Void Shards were dropping like crazy from... What did we get? Oh, a five-star... You shouldn't have. Thanks, Polarium. They um they were dropping like left and right. At one point I had like over a hundred Lego books. And now they barely seem to oh come what is this? I was so close to getting that purple. I would have taken that purple purple chest. And there's there's no way to like know which one is gonna be which. Alright, you kinda just have to guess. Last one. Uh all right, let's look at the pieces of gear. Actually, let's do this. We'll take this. I'm not going for Mithrala's soul, by the way. It just so happens that it, it's it's happening. So I don't intend to get here, but if I do, I'm not going to be mad about it either. All right, let's look at the pieces of gear that we got. We have this one. It's okay. Depends on how it rolls. A lot of these are going to depend on how it rolls. Stone skin, I might see if this rolls um, quite a bit onto the red right here and if it does i'm going to try re-rolling it but then again it's also a res banner on stone skin so it might be good might not depends on how it rolls but even then generally speaking these special um sets you don't want to get rid of so when it comes to accessories and i learned this from aries who enlightened me uh when it comes to the accessories you're more than likely going to not want to get rid of them the same thing for like Basically, any piece of gear that you get from anything PvP-wise, Siege, Hydra Clash, or um, from Live Arena, you're more than likely going to want to keep. So, just keep that in mind. I'll keep this one for sure. Hopefully, we roll in that res. Avoid all the other crap around it. So, for this one, res or crit damage is what I'm looking for. Accuracy, hopefully we get that triple speed. Save it for... Uh, Siffy, hopefully roll high. We roll high on the speed right there. Accuracy, nothing wrong with that. A lot of these are not giving me like the best substats. I haven't seen anything that was just like, oh my god, that's crazy so far. Crit damage on the flat defense, I guess. No, nothing special so far. This one's okay. I'm not a fan of a flat attack. For skinwalkers, bombers. No. Nothing special there. And again, you know, it is protection in stone skin. Stone skin is especially because once you're able to get that nine piece in, then your stone skin becomes a lot stronger. So there's that. Or you could have like a double set, like, I, I don't know, uh, Savage and Stone Skin, for an example. Like one thing that I've been wanting to do for Taurus is if I can get the stats for him, I would put him in Savage or Lethal. And stone skin, one piece stone skin. Because at the start of a lot of fights, when I'm using when I'm using Taurus, he either gets feared because he like goes up against Lydia, who automatically attacks him because he places fears naturally with his passive on certain champions. But if I had that, then CCing wouldn't be too much of a problem for Taurus. Sometimes he also gets frozen or he gets stunned. The other guy goes first. That creates a problem for Taurus because then I have to wait one turn. And sometimes, half the time... Okay, this one looks pretty good. Half the time, he doesn't even get to go. Because he's he was stunned. 
and he's only my, my only damage dealer. This one's probably going to be like the best one that I've seen so far with perfect stats. Depends on how it rolls. Let's go ahead and roll it. Let's roll it up to 12. See how it rolls. Come on. Triples. And oh my god, they gave me one one ones. So not my favorite. It's always the rolls. They're like, hey, we'll give you this really nice one, but we're going to give you bad rolls. Accuracy with attack percent. Hoping for all these pentas. This one's not bad either. Stone skin, speed, defense, attack. Avoid that flat attack. This one's pretty trash, but it's stone skin. Make, make things happen. Yeah. Hey, real quick. Hopefully your guys' uh, siege went well. I wanted to go ahead and click this last um, set of uh, rewards here for Siege. I'm going to donate all of these to the clan. It's only a tier 3. But what we're looking for here is the victory chest. So what do we get? We get more gear for winning. We get this reroll. Or I like that. We get the uh, variable. What is this? The feral set? Yeah, feral set. Now... I didn't really give my input on the Feral set before, just because I didn't know it was a thing. I think I've seen like videos and thumbnails talking about it, but um, I guess I can go ahead and actually read what's going on here. Get extra accuracy, speed, block debuffs on the wearer at the start of the round. So like a, an immunity set, immunity set with with more stats, extra extra speed, 50% uh, chance to prevent the placement of sheep. That's actually kind of huge. A six piece will stop you from getting polymorphed or give you a 50% chance to not get polymorphed, which is, you know, running rampant in live arena or just in general, especially with the introduction of mons, extra speed, extra accuracy. Allies deal 5% more damage per debuff placed by the wearer. That's pretty huge. I can't think off the top of my head who I would use this with. Now, these stats are looking pretty okay. This one, yeah, it's okay. Generally, what I look for is I obviously want, like, favorable substats all around. I'm okay with one flat substat showing up, and I'm more lenient when it's special sets like these. But if I see something with, like, a bunch of flat stats, I'm kind of like, oh, I don't know about this one. Like this one, you have flat HP, flat attack. I'm kind of like, eh, about it. But it really just depends on how it rolls, and even then, I still might keep it just because these kinds of sets take forever to go ahead and try to get. Now, we do get Primal Quartz, that's huge, and we get an Avatar. I am really into Avatars. I'm going to keep this. I mean, I don't really have a choice to get rid of it, but yeah, I'm, I'm an Avatar chaser. And we do get seven for Authoritarix Lamasu, who is going to be a crazy champion once we get her. Now, I was talking to my clan about this. I don't know how the pair pairing is going to go uh, moving forward. Because I know that our first pair in Siege was going to reflect the average of our last four CVC um, placements. But I don't know if that's going to perseverate even further. So, um, to take part, okay, I want to know more about the matchmaking process. So if you guys know anything more about it, how they're going to do it moving forward, then uh, let me know, please, because I would like to know. Is there anything here about it? Let me just see. Destroying, repairing bonuses, conditions, setting team defense, changing rewards for undestroyed buildings, attacking in the battle phase, rebattles, declaring attack, winning siege, victory, clan rankings. Oh, here, what about this? Building specific rankings that show how many florins a clan member has donated uh okay that's for like specific in-game okay like for your specific clan it's the battle report and this is for tiers um yeah let me know guys if you know how how we're uh, matched up with other people thank you